Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. We got Bob writing in on the email. He's got a question about bridge cameras. And you know what? Bridge cameras, I think, are still a strong selling segment of the camera market. It seems to be still very popular. I always have fun shooting with them. Bob is asking, he says, I need some guidance, please. He says, hi there. My name is Bob. I live in the UK. Uh, for a couple of weeks, I started following your channel and I've learned a lot. I discovered that I like photography, so I'm new in this sector. I'm interested in particular in bridge cameras. Can you give me some advice uh, between some of them? I have some preferences and I want your professional opinion, please. So he's got listed here the P900, the B700, both Nikons, and the Panasonic FZ300 and FZ880. Uh, Sorry, I was going to say 800, but the FZ80. So those four cameras, the 900, 700, the 300, and the 80. Which one should I get and why do you think uh, it's better than the others? Or if you have any other suggestions regarding other bridge cameras out there, please feel free to tell me. The comparison can be uh, regarding best bridge camera, quality versus price, and then uh, best bridge camera overall. Thanks very much for your time. So thanks for your question, Bob. Um, Right away for me, I would rule it down. I would rule out the P900. So I would have it down to the B700, the FZ300, and the FZ80. If you want to throw in another option, as you were asking, the FZ1000 would be a, a camera to look at too. Larger sensor. It's more expensive though. So that's why I wasn't initially going to throw it in, but I'm just going to throw that out there. Have a look. You may like it. It's got the one-inch sensor. Really good offering from Panasonic as well. Um, however, let's stick with um, what, you, what you've what you narrowed it down to. I'm going to throw out the 900. Let me tell you why. The 900, um, there's, there is... Basically, the reasons for buying the P900 is you need that extra reach. It has like a 2,000 millimeter equivalent lens. It's an 83 times lens, if you want to look at the times factor, how they rate lenses. Whereas the others are 60 times lenses, with the exception of the FC300, which is only a 24 times. So the 900 has the longest lens. So unless you really, really want that extreme reach, that is that is really the only reason to buy the 900. The 900 is crippled in relation to the others in the sense that... Um, there's no RAW and there's no 4K. And the RAW is the huge thing here because I don't really think, we're not really thinking about these as video cameras, although the other three do have 4K video. So um, it is crippled, no RAW, no 4K. Um, and so in essence, the one reason you would buy the P900 is for that extremely long lens, that 2000 millimeter equivalent lens, which is pretty cool. I mean, I've shot with it, I've reviewed it. I don't not like the camera. It's just a very niche camera in the sense of I would buy... In almost any situation, I would buy the B700 over it because you got the ability to shoot raw, which is a huge advantage, and you got 4K video. So I would go 700 unless I just absolutely needed that extra bit of reach. You still got a 60 times lens on the B700, and you could shoot 4K, and you could shoot raw. Then um, we got the FZ300 and the FZ80. Um, the differences are the 300 as a 24 times lens, but a constant aperture F2.8 lens. So you got a faster brighter lens can take in more light can shoot in darker situations it focuses a little faster um and it's 4k and a 12 megapixel sensor so given for the same size it's probably a little cleaner sensor too you know all else being equal less resolution on the same technology and same size sensor is going to be cleaner at at lower megapixels the fz80 has a 60 time lens uh, 60 times lens we're back to the same length of lens as the b700 it is 4k it's a variable aperture lens though and it's only it's it's 18 megapixels Um, not necessarily a bad offering there what you're going to have to look at here how you can narrow it down for your own thinking on this is if you're really into photos then i would probably lean towards the b700 because that has raw ability for photos and that's going to be huge for the squeezing the best image quality you can out of these cameras bear in mind all these cameras have smaller imaging sensors in them so you're not it's not going to be comparable quality to a dslr and i'm assuming maybe i shouldn't assume just want you to understand that that you're not getting anywhere near dslr quality you're not even getting one inch sensor quality these are all small sensors um not it's not necessarily a negative because there's still good value for the price but if you want to bump it up into a higher more expensive camera you look at one inch sensor cameras and then you go to dslr you know APS-C cameras and then ultimately to full frame that's the kind of the hierarchy as we go if you're looking for quality and size related so if you really just want if if you're really into video and and uh or sorry if you're really into photos then i would say the b700 is the way to go if if you're leaning towards a lot of video the Panasonics are arguably better video cameras. 
um, and can shoot. Uh, I think they both have raw options available too. So either of the Panasonics, just depending on if you want more reach on the lens, but a slower lens, or if you prefer a faster lens with not quite as much reach. Just depends on if you're shooting in a lot of lower lighting than that less reach, faster lens would help you. If you're shooting in just general outdoor, you know, walk around photos at the zoo, like the just standard everyday photo walks type thing, then then maybe the longer lens might be the one you want. So those are your deciding factors you're going to have to look at. If you're really a lot into video, lean towards one of the two Panasonics. Um, and then can you live with the shorter reach, but you want the faster lens? So low light shooting environments. Although none of these cameras are going to be great in low light, but the FC300 does actually surprisingly good. The FC80 just gives you more reach, not as good in low light. So you got to you can make your decision based on those factors there. Let's throw it back to our viewers though. What would you guys buy? Bob's looking at these cameras, a B700, FZ300, FZ80, and he's even looking at the P900, which I've kind of ruled out, but what would you guys buy and why? Let us know in the comments below. Let's help Bob make his decision. Are there points to consider here that you would factor in that I haven't mentioned? Um, is there another camera you think he should look at? Um, let, me, let us know in the comments below. Let's help Bob out. Thanks for your question, Bob. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.